He's pretending that this is some new thing that the Democrats pulled out, stuck into the bill, and snuck it past one Ted Cruz. It's always been mandatory spending so that the government can't just cut off their funding at any point. No trick, no gimmick. There was no reason for them to switch the votes. The bill that passed the Senate 84 to 14 on June 16th has not had one word added to it by Democrats or spending fairies or anybody else. He's so good. This veterans activist, comedian John Stewart, calling out Ted Cruz and the other 24 Republican senators by refuting their claim that they had any sort of legitimate reason for changing their votes from yes to no, and hence blocking the bipartisan life-saving bill for U.S. veterans exposed to burn pit toxins overseas. Other than, of course, the real reason they did it, political pettiness and resentment over a separate surprise Schumer Mansion spending deal that became public last week, which Senator John Corning confirmed in a tweet over the weekend when he wrote, quote, passage would not have been delayed if Senator Schumer had kept his promises. Good news is, despite his mendacity, it will pass this next week. Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer says that they'll try another vote early this week as veterans protest on the Capitol steps again today, where they've camped out every single night since Thursday. Over the weekend, we show you before we went to our break, they got a surprise call and pizza delivery from the president, as well as a promise to get this legislation passed. We're back again with Paul Rykoff. He's the host of the Independent Americans podcast, the founder of the group Iraq and Afghanistan Veterans of America. Miles Taylor is also here, former chief of staff for the Department of Homeland Security. Um, Paul, I, I told you Friday we'd come back to this, and it felt like a weekend of important political momentum and movement, not just the president's participation via FaceTime, but this confession, really, that it was purely politics behind the Republican flip-flop. Yeah, we knew it all along. I mean, this has been about politics. It's been about power. It's been about obstructionism. And it's been led by one senator that we need to continue to name, Senator Pat Toomey from Pennsylvania, a Republican ringleader who's roped, I think, a lot of other Republicans in on this that are probably regretting it. This has become a movement. Veterans are coming from all over the country to Washington, D.C. to join the Firewatch right now. They're sleeping on the steps of the Senate. This is kind of like the Cindy Sheehan moment when she lost her son in Iraq and she camped outside of President Bush's uh, ranch, and it just kept growing and growing. And that's what's happening now. I, I want to parse one thing that I think is important. This is about Pat Toomey on a very little and shrinking political island. It's not some conspiracy by the Democrats. If it was, why did six Republicans also vote for it? Republicans like Marco Rubio, Jerry Moran, Chuck Grassley, Lindsey Graham, Susan Collins, John Bozeman, they all voted for it, too. So it's about Toomey being petty. Uh, being political and trying to be some kind of folk hero for fiscal conservancy. Instead, he's become a political suicide bomber. He doesn't care about anybody else but his political agenda, and he's going to blow up anything in his way. You know, Paul, I, 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 I worked for President Bush. I mean, that, that was an unbelievably powerful protest and an unbelievably powerful message and an unbelievably, um, you know, sort of potent political argument. It does feel like the same thing here. Um, what can you do to make sure that no one forgets that these Republicans were for it before they were against it? Keep calling them out. Keep naming it. Keep putting the roll call. I put it on Twitter. We continue to put it out there. Uh, and, and I think keep up the pressure. It looks like now Chuck Schumer said that we're going to get a vote this week. We think that'll be Wednesday. If you're a Republican, you got to hate that. Because, you know, we used to say when I, when I led a veterans group, the only thing that, that you really can't cross in America are, are puppies, babies, and veterans. They've crossed veterans in a very big way. They're cross groups like the VFW and the American Legion and IAVA, and they're all mobilizing. And every day that vote yeah. gets delayed, more and more of them are going to mobilize and more political pressure is going to build and hit them in the midterms, especially with independent Americans and with other voters that are persuadable, especially on national security and defense issues. I want to bring Miles in on, on what they're thinking, but I, I do want to get back to the substance again of the bill. Um, tell me what, um, what doesn't get done every day that this bill doesn't pass, Paul. Well, more veterans die. 
I mean, we've, we've got uh, millions of veterans who've been exposed to toxins, myself included. Uh, you've got veterans sleeping on the steps of the Senate with oxygen tanks. You've got people who've already lost their family members, who've lost their children, and they're trying to convey that every day we delay, more veterans die. I've said this before. Senator Pat Toomey has blood on his hands. That's why you see other Republicans running away from him. You don't hear anybody else but him and Ted Cruz defending this. Mitt Romney isn't defending this. Other people aren't defending this because now it's getting worse and worse because more veterans are dying and you're hearing their personal stories. So maybe that's a bit of a silver lining here is that we can tell everyone our stories and get more support beyond government support because we're going to need it at the community level, at the local level for decades and really a generation to come. Miles, when and where and how did this shift to happen in the Republican Party that crossing our veterans became politically appealing to them? Oh, well, I, I hate to give it <laughs> such a finite uh, point in time, but I think we know it's during the Trump administration. You know, I want to tell viewers something, Nicole, here. There is a more insidious agenda behind what Pat Toomey and Ted Cruz are doing which is ultimately the goal here is they want to blow up veterans affairs and veterans benefits. And that's something that was actively discussed during the Trump administration. And it's really what's at the core of this is, you know, they're trying to pretend it's just about spending provisions in general. But what they're worried about is that it will make it harder for them to blow up the department of veterans affairs. Now, I used to be on the appropriations committee. I'm a recovering appropriator the person, you know, who would take out the red pen and cross out line items on Capitol Hill to, you know, make the budget smaller and, and be more fiscally conservative. What they're saying about this being a budget gimmick is itself a gimmick. Because again, Nicole, what this is really about is if this bill goes into effect, it's going to make it harder for them to gut veterans benefit. These are exactly the terms that were used during the Trump administration. I actually talked today to a former head of the Department of Veterans Affairs during the Trump administration, who said repeatedly White House staff told them the president wanted to blow up Veterans Affairs. And people on Capitol Hill on the Republican side did as well. They saw the agency, in their opinion, as bloated, and they wanted to take a wrecking ball to it. Well, you're not just talking about, you know, reorganizing a bureaucracy. As Paul noted, you are talking about people's lives. You're talking about veterans' lives. The only thing that held Trump back from doing that in the first term was re-election, and people around him conceded it. They were worried that if they destroyed better, veterans' benefits, then, yes, they wouldn't get re-elected. But, you know, that's what I worry about, whether it's a second Donald Trump term or a Republican majority. I worry about them going much further than blocking bills like this and actually trying to gut veterans' benefits in this country as, a, as an excuse for saving money uh, on annual budget appropriations. Paul, I, this is the first, really, that I've understood that this is sort of an out-in-the-open um, campaign or talk among Republicans to decimate the department. The department, while flawed, does serve the needs of, of all of our country's veterans and their families. I mean, what is the counter to that? Well, this has been a crusade uh, by privatizers for as long as the Department of Veterans Affairs has existed. I mean, the VA is the second largest federal agency in the government, over $300 billion, second to, to the Pentagon. And if you don't like government health care, you really don't like VA health care because it's the most close thing we have to a national model. And it's been that way for a while. So throughout the Trump administration, you saw so-called fiscal conservatives look for waste and fraud and try to take a wrecking ball to the VA. Why quality of care still remains high. High, popularity remains high, and the political uh, risk here remains high. So the VA is going to continue to serve people. We need to continue to support it with proper funding and proper oversight and recognize that when it comes to politics, it's kind of a sacred cow. And you, and you cross that yeah. issue very, very high political risk.